Hey everyone, welcome back to Only Nature. My name is Tom and today I'm unboxing the Green Backyard Long Range Bird Box Camera. That's coming up. Okay, so in just a moment, we'll take a look at some footage from this camera and then I'll go into the unboxing and talk a bit about the use, uh, things I've found with it, all that kind of thing. But first of all, I just want to say a quick thank you to Green Backyard. They have gifted me this camera for me to have a look at. So a huge thank you to them. But for right now, let's take a look at some footage. Okay, so before we go any further, let's take a look inside the box. And the first thing we pull out is this ethernet cable, along with a wall bracket for the transmitter, with the cable already attached. There are two aerials, one being slightly larger than the other, one for the camera and one for the receiver. These two white boxes both contain one DC 12 volt power adapter. This box contains the receiver to be used with one of the power adapters and the ethernet cable. And the final box contains a small wall bracket with the camera wrapped inside. This is a 1080p camera with a fixed 2.5 mm ultra wide angle lens. Invisible night vision with no glow infrared LEDs, a built in microphone, and is housed in an IP66 rated weatherproof casing. Overall, the camera is very small and feels very durable. The solid metal housing gives a little weight to this camera that just feels quality. Very impressed with the overall build of this. As for the installation, I'm using the larger of the two aerials attached directly into the receiver and the smaller aerial attached to the camera via the wall mount. Both of the power adapters can be fixed into place simply by pushing together and screwing tightly to close thus ensuring the power supply to be weatherproof. The ethernet can also be attached to the transmitter with a weatherproof covering, should the receiver be mounted externally to your router. Simply slide the cover over the ethernet connection point and screw tightly to seal. Once you've powered the receiver, simply install the ethernet cable into your router and choose the LAN option to connect the camera in the app. Now it's time to install the camera. As it's already well into the nesting season, I didn't want to use this camera on an empty bird box. Instead, I wanted to show the true versatility of this camera and demonstrate how you could use this anywhere, not just in a nest box. So I picked a nice spot to position the camera overlooking the edge of my pond. As I had already connected the camera to the app, I used this to plan the camera's position before mounting it. I then attached the wall bracket by screwing it into place and proceeded to mount the camera. Be careful when fixing the camera outside, as these small screws could be very easily lost, and they do require a small screwdriver to install. With that being said, the whole process took only a few seconds and was very easy to set up. The final step was to simply attach the aerial bracket and fix into place. For power, I used an extension with a weatherproof box 
For me, this is only temporary, but it worked just fine. Now, we just wait for the birds. Oh, and by the way, if you were wondering about the weatherproof rating of this camera, then here's what happened a few moments later. And over the next few days. So yes, it's definitely weatherproof. Okay, now I'll quickly share a few of my thoughts about the camera with you all. So far, really enjoying it. Really good experience with the camera and the app, which I'll talk a bit about in a second. But as for the camera itself, I've been really impressed. It's been out all week by my pond. It's been through hail, thunderstorms, heat waves, everything. It's, it's had everything all this week and it is held up brilliantly. I should say, despite having the aerial receiver inside the house, I've had no issues with connection or anything like that. It's been really reliable. It's been stable on the app. Um, it's never, I've never had like interference or anything like that. It's been really good. And that is broadcasting through a double glazed window and brick wall on that side of the house all the way over to the pond, which is about 10 meters away, I'd say. So not a huge distance away, but at the same time, it, receiving that signal through the window and the house itself without actually having it outside just shows how strong of a signal it really is giving off. Okay, so now I'll talk a bit about the app and I'll actually record the screen right here so you can see what I'm doing. So this is how it looks as you come onto the app. And as you can see, it's got the camera selection at the top there. You can refresh this just by pulling down and it will refresh if it doesn't connect instantly. Sometimes you just refresh it and it appears straight away. Smart alarm is to receive notifications. So you can turn that off just by pressing it or you can turn it back on. I've had it on, but it has gone off quite a lot that I've often muted it at times just because it's in a really busy area. So if we go onto it right here, now you can see this is the live view outside. So it looks really good. This SD stands for standard definition. So I can press this and it'll go to full HD. And you saw that bump and sharpness just in the image there. So you can tell that's now full HD. So there's nothing there at the minute, but if you click down here onto local record, and it will load straight away, it loads video of the last thing that was seen. So here it was, it was this blackbird, by the look at this. And we can scroll across either by the time at the bottom, so it looks down here, it was particularly busy. And that will show you the clips of this time. So I think actually the sun's been triggering it a lot. So that's not the camera's fault, that's actually my positioning of the camera that's at fault there, but never mind, it's, it's still picking up a lot of birds around the pond, which is great. So there we go, a nice little green finch there. Amazing. So if we want to save this video, we can click the little download arrow and you can click, you can click download all or, or select all, I should say, with the little green, blue tick up there. And then there's Rob in there. Just click download. When I actually click it. And there we go, that's going into the download management. So that will download, and then when I come out of here, if I come straight out, and then go back down to mobile storage, click this, it says empty, that's because we're on pictures at the top. So if we click videos, and there you go, there's all the videos that I've captured. So it's seen a lot of action. So if we go on one like this, it's been great seeing the magpies. Let's close that. If we tilt it as well, that'll go full screen. Which is so cool. <laughs> I love seeing these. So now, if I want to save this video, I'll just come out of this. So, oh, we've got new footage here. That's the one I've just downloaded. So now if I want to save this, you need to click the top right-hand corner and then select the clip then we want to press share and then we want to press save video and that's it it'll save it so then we can cancel that come out of there and that'll be in your photos on your phone 
The one downside to that is you can only save one video at a time, so you have to individually select them, save them, unselect them, and keep going on. That's probably the only downside, I'd say, um, but that's more the app than the camera. So as for the camera itself, there's a few things that I've changed in here. Obviously, you've got the local storage. So this is how much is on the camera. And as you see here, you press overwrite, so it will automatically overwrite all the clips, just like a regular CCTV camera. So then obviously we've got smart alarm, so you can turn the alarm off. You've got human detection, if that's something you wanted. You can put on do not disturb, uh, push notifications. You can tell it whether to record, things like that in there. There's advanced settings as well. I think I changed the interval time to five minutes and turned the sensitivity and change the sensitivity to low because it was picking up so, a lot of birds all the time. And not just that, it was picking up a lot of the reeds and grasses that were grown around the camera. So there's lots of options in there, but that was definitely something that I wanted to have a little look around and just kind of play around with the customization of it all. I think that really helps in making the camera how you want it and how, picking up the kind of things that you want to see and know about. So I hope that helps. Okay, so overall thoughts of the camera. Honestly, I'm really loving it. It's it's more than I thought it was going to be. For such a small sized camera, it, it really delivers that power. I mean, you saw the quality of those clips. I mean, I was really impressed with that. One thing I would love to try in the future is maybe trying it at a longer range, but also try live streaming from there. You can do it online. There's a little leaflet thing that comes with it that does sort of explain it but I haven't gone into it yet so maybe in the future if that's something you'd like to see then let me know but right now I haven't really got anything more to say it's just a great camera I've really enjoyed it huge thank you again to Green Backyard for letting me try this out and hopefully letting me use it for future videos so yeah that's it from me <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed this video and I hope you found it useful Please let me know what you think down in the comments below and subscribe for future videos. I've got some other videos planned to come out hopefully within the next few weeks. So stay tuned for that and that's it. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks.